Okay, hello everyone. First, before we start with the, the continuation of book three, I want to ask you whether you have, whether you still have any questions about the TMA. I hope you have already started, should already be done with the TMA, okay? But if you still have any questions, you can, uh, you have my email address, you have Moodle, okay? We can communicate just to make sure that everything is okay for the TMA, all right? Make sure you do a good job so that you don't lower your grade, so that you boost your grade, okay? You haven't started yet? Nothing? No? Okay, well, during the break I'll give it to you. Because I don't have the exams anymore, but I have the grades. Okay. Today we are going to cover chapter 5 from book 3. Chapter 5 from book 3 actually is about two things. So it's basically like almost as if it's two chapters. Okay. Chapter 5 talks about marketing and finance documents. Already you have noticed that all the information in book 3 revolves around documents. Well, the title of book 3 is how to write influential documents. And we saw, first of all, how reports are different from essays. And then we focused on the qualities of reports. Okay, We saw different types of reports. And in chapter 5, we're going to focus on Marketing and finance documents. Basically, marketing documents in the diet, advertising, right? Where do you find advertising, for example? In the newspapers, on billboards, after she went through from after art, right? Uh, on TV, everywhere, marketing, right? Whereas finance documents are documents that must include numbers, financial documents that belong to certain companies, right? So we will see what are the strategies to producing successful marketing and finance documents. And the focus more in chapter 5 is on how to produce a finance document because it is directly related to the second part of chapter 2. Now when we get to the finance documents, I'll go back to chapter 2, the second part of chapter 2, and connect it with this because whenever the question about how to produce a finance document is asked on the final, it is usually related to chapter two at the same time because they are uh, continuation, okay? So, marketing documents, all right? We'll start with marketing documents. Writing short documents at work. Documents are written, are written tools that help the process of communication with and between organizations and individuals. They are created to do things, they have particular Purposes, like any piece of writing, it is written for a certain purpose. Okay? A little communication at work may be required to coordinate joint activities within an organization. It might be involved in setting up relationships with clients and suppliers to make sure that mutual work involved flows smoothly. It might promote the company and the product in the marketplace. It may report on business activity for business regulators investors or other stakeholders. One actor she other examples in now finance documents. Right? Okay, but usually examples of where do we find usually different types of documents in the workplace and why do we write them for all these different purposes. Okay? In contrast with the text you have written previously, the text in this session are read by many people. When you write an advertisement, you cannot expect that only one person is going to read it. It's not like the essay. When you write the essay, you know that the person who's going to read your essay mainly is your tutor. But when you write a marketing text, at the bro, for example, the advertisement on the billboard, thousands, maybe millions of people will, are going to see this document. So for that reason, the qualities of that document are going to be different from the document that is written for only one person, okay? It's the same for a finance document. Let's say the company at the end of the year must produce a financial document that describes the expenses, the profits, the losses, right, for an auditor to make sure that the company is working properly. 
there's not only one person who's going to read this document as well, right? There's the, 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 the head of the company, the managers, the regulators, the auditors, more than one person. But what do we do? How do we write a text that's going to be written, uh, that's going to be read by many people? Usually, you know, I'm sure you're aware of this, that marketing texts take into consideration the segment of population. Right? And the, uh, remember when we were talking about Nike in book two, when Nike, for example, makes an advertisement, the advertisement is not for every part or every member of the population. If it wants to make advertisement, it makes them depending on the segment of population that it wants to target. And in the eye, for example, for women's uh, shoes, running shoes, are different from the advertisements for men's running shoes, different from the children's uh, running shoes. Because when they make an advertisement, they consider all the needs and wants of a certain market segment. Okay? And what do women like to wear for sports between the ages of 15 and 25? They conduct their studies. They figure out all the colors and likes and dislikes that women have, for example, and they make the advertisement to attract buyers. The same for men. Same for every type of advertisement. For washing machines, for cars, for products, for clothes. It's the same. The people in the company don't do them haphazardly. There has to be many studies that are conducted prior to the advertisement to know what the people want. Shafir and the population. Okay? Men between the ages of 15, boys between the ages of 15 and 20. Then between the ages of 20 to 30. What do they want? What do they like? customers. Right? So, in contrast with the text we have written previously, the text and the session are read by many people. Akhtar Shid marketing documents. The writers of marketing and finance texts do not know their readers in the same way as a student knows their tutor. Now, for example, for the TMA, we have clear instructions of how you want to write your TMA. So that, right, and these instructions, you know them from me, your tutor, because I'm going to be the one who's going to correct your TMA. However, this does not mean they have no idea about who their audience, who their audiences are. Like we explained, uh, studies on the segment of population that they want to target. On the contrary, writers of marketing texts have knowledge of the market or market segment they are writing for. Okay, market segment, يعني شاف من population that they they want to study. Writers of financial texts have knowledge of the customers and investors who will read their texts, and the legal and financial regulators who will monitor what they write. I cannot just put any numbers from the company and expect it to be a successful financial document. There are rules, there are regulations. في taxes, right? How the be rules and regulations. I should know them before I write my finance document. Okay? Now, if you remember, we had for book two, for the uh, for uh, we, uh, we had a checklist that told us how to make sure that our essay was uh, conform to the structure and design and content of how an essay should be like. Right? We said that that checklist. We took parts of the checklist from each chapter, and then that checklist was at the end of uh, book two. The same checklist or the same style of checklist exists for documents as well, okay? And it's also put at the end of the book for you. Just let me check. Yes, it's on page 167. Okay, page 167. It follows the same structure, the criteria, the checklists follow the same structure as the ones that we had taken for the uh, essays. Okay? We have uh, A talks about research, B organization of the text, C language of the field, D language of the relationship, 
e-language or the text organization and F qualities of presentation. Very similar to the one we have taken about essays. Okay, so now we're going to have a quick overview of this checklist. All right? If you remember carefully, the information that you need to memorize about the checklist related to documents is at the beginning of session one in book three. Okay? All right? They are written all on the same slide. So the place that you need to study them is from that slide particularly, okay? For example, what is it that they're asking us here? They have taken some sentences from all the checklists. They have paraphrased the sentences. They're not the same. What we want to do is figure out uh, whether each point, we need to figure out where do these uh, points come from, from which checklist, okay? For example, Okay, keep uh, page 167 open so that you can refer to it. For example, which checklist uh, can, in which checklist can we find information about correct and sufficient in the information they provide? Or something related to it. At least find the word relevant information, appropriate research methods, right? In which checklist is it? مش ضروري يكونوا نفس الكلمات بس نفس المعنى. Sufficient and correct information. If you just look for look for the word information, it will be enough already. And the research. But research, I will write that Because it's when I do research that I figure out what is the information that I need, right? I, I read a lot of your uh, TMAs that are already posted on uh, Turnitin. It's obvious in question two, right? It needed research, and you cannot just copy anything from the research, whatever is relevant to the essay that is required of you. Clearly focused on a specific purpose. From which checklist do you think this is taken? It's from B, right? Because it says, Clearly focused on a specific purpose, it means that the structure of the text is clear and appropriate to the task and the context. Okay? Uh, number three here, the third point, clearly focused on the user of the document. Who's the user of the document? The person is going to read it, right? Basically, you produce it, but someone's going to use it. The user is the reader. So. Of the field. Exactly. It must be the language of the field. Is the language appropriate to the subject of the text? Well organized and well thought through. Uh, is the essay well organized and well thought through? It means our of the text. organization of the text. Very good. Readable and concise. Concise, exactly. Readable, يعني اللغة اللي عم استعملها, right? In my document, makes it easy for people who are going to read the document to read it properly. Okay? So, organization of the text. The last one is the easiest one. Presentable and layout and accurate in writing. Qualities of presentation. Okay? So, all right. But we forgot to mention a fact that both now, the, third, the fourth and fifth point can belong to two uh, can belong to two checklists, if you want, B and E. Now, anyways, this is just a, uh, it's supposed to be a refreshing of our memory as to what pertains to the content of the checklists. Okay, like I told you, the information that we must study from the checklist is available in session one of book three. It's on the first couple of slides. Okay? When we get to reviewing book three, we can go over that as well. All right. Now, now we're going to focus on marketing documents. Now, in, in the book, they ask the students to produce themselves a, a marketing document. All right? But with the objectives related to our course, it's not mandatory that we produce in class a text that has to do with more. So what we're going to do is we're going to just look at the techniques required to produce a marketing text. We're going to look at some marketing texts and extract some qualities from them. 
Okay? This is what we're going to do. So we won't be writing one ourselves. Describing to self. With marketing text and specifically sales text, you can see how companies describe themselves. Right? Yeah. When we talk about this part from the chapter, think of all the advertisements you have. You see everything. On television, on the billboards, when you open a newspaper, anywhere, right? We are bombarded with advertisements all day long on the radio. And every company is trying to sell its product in one way or another. Okay? The texts in this session are written for readers outside the company. They are texts designed to influence customers. In order to communicate with, it, with customers, it is important to know who you are talking to. individuals, segment of the population. For this reason, companies spend a lot of time and a lot of money on identifying and understanding their customers. Okay? Now, the, the example that they have given us is uh, if you all, some, most of us use the banks, right? Even if we don't have a bank account in the bank, we may go make payments in the bank, right? For example, the installments for the university payments are done at the bank, right? This is one thing we do at the bank. What else do we do at the bank? We have an account, for example, okay. What else can we do at the bank? What can we use the bank for, if you want? All the small things that you can, that can cross your mind. We can deposit checks, cash checks, right? Take loans. Take loans, very good. Usually, right? Take loans, either take a sum of money or take a loan for a car, for example, or for a house, right? These are different ways that we use the bank. But the bank doesn't only have us as their customers. The bank, like most other companies, has different segments of population that it deals with. Especially banks. If you go to any website of a bank, you will notice that the bank has at least three divisions on its website. There is something called personal banking, retail banking. Personal banking is for regular people like us who go to the bank to open an account, to take a small loan, to deposit checks, take a credit card, these small things, all right? On the other hand, the, 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 the bank also deals with business people, all right? And the business people are divided into two categories. There are the small businesses, and small and big are related to the amount of annual net profit that the company does. A small business could be, for example, if the company, if the company's annual net profit is around turnover, yeah, is around fifty thousand dollars, one hundred thousand dollars, or anything around that number, would be considered a small business. Whereas, if a company's turnover during a year is above a million dollars, all right, it's no longer a small business, right? It's a, it's a bigger uh, business. It's uh, I forgot the name of the. Come back to it. So usually the bank, like other companies, deals with three different types of customers. The regular people, right? Personal banking. And then bank atina example. This is the example of the all the marketing documents. But still, atina banks as examples. Okay? Retail customers, small businesses, and corporate institutions. Corporate institutions are the huge companies that have a lot of turnover. I mean, basically, the banks make money, make profit from the businesses and the uh, corporate institutions, and not from regular people like us. Okay? Okay? bank is very small compared to what corporate institutions pay. Okay? So, the divisions are personal, private banking, business banking, and corporate banking. Now, imagine you, let's say, want to specialize in advertising. And I'm talking about business with content khassas to marketing. Okay? Now, as the content khassas to marketing, your field of studies has to do with uh, studying the segment of population, right? Also, 
ways of making advertisements, basically. Whether it's written, it's visual, it's on the radio, these are all types of advertisements. So, as I'm going to act of the eye, with the LF the eye, I have to consider which segment of population am I writing the advertisement for? Okay? I will divide it basically into two sections. Regular people, us, okay? And people who own businesses. Because people who own businesses don't purchase one item of something. They purchase a bigger quantity, right? So the way I need to deal with the corporate organizations, the businesses, is different from the way I need to deal with regular uh, customers. Okay, so basically what we will look at in this chapter, in the marketing section, two types of documents. One written for regular individuals like us, and one written for big corporations, big organizations. Alright? Now, I can even, uh, for example, any bank that you can think of, Right? The book gives us some examples of banks, but any bank that you have ever been to. Uh, I chose HSBC because it also has a branch in Lebanon. It's a British uh, bank, basically. So if you go to this British uh, bank, we have a branch of it in Lebanon as well. When you go to the website of this bank, you will immediately notice the three divisions. Personal banking, business, or uh, small businesses and corporate. Just if you are curious, just click. If you click on the div on these divisions, you will see different types of advertisements. different. For example, here you see they are on top. In the left-hand corner, we have personal and business, right? Personal. And in the business, they have different sections. In the business, hatin, right? small businesses and corporations. If we click on personal, which is, this is directly related to the uh, slides that I'm going to read in a bit, because they, they will give us the structure of sentences that are used in writing marketing texts for uh, regular people, and the structure of sentences that are used in writing a marketing text for big corporations. Okay? Usually you will notice that any, any advertisement related to uh, regular people, they are very short and they are very personal, as if someone is talking to you, right? Because they want to grab your attention. They are per very personal, they are short, and they are made to draw your attention as quickly as possible. Okay, because you don't want to sit for half an hour or one hour trying to listen to an advertisement. It has to be fast, it has to be quick, it has to be attractive to grab your attention. Otherwise, your attention will be for something else because there are so many things that are advertising every day. So you can see how short they are. See how text shows up. So fight the mortgage for you. You, you, you. If we go to the business, if our internet connection were faster, right? So anyways, now when it opens, I will show you as well how different the sentence is there or it doesn't open, okay? Refresh. One storm and everything is gone. Anyhow, I will try later on. But any bank, you go to bank out, they won't be lost. These common banks in Lebanon, again, they have the same divisions. Especially bank out because it deals a lot with big <coughs> corporations. Other than the Akhtar Man Ba'it al the Lebanon. Okay, so, how to, how to banks? Okay, but this, I want to draw your attention to something. On the slide it says how do banks. It's not necessary, but we focus on banks. Any, any company that wants to sell something goes through the same procedures, okay? How do banks, uh, whether, whether it's, whatever it's trying to sell is a service or a product. You know, the bank doesn't sell products, it sells services, but services, products are the same. 
How do banks address these different audiences? The banks address these different audiences in different ways. The reason is that, what in different ways? The reason is that different groups of customers have different needs and different wants. marketing, the needs and wants of the customers. Because this is what we want to provide for them, okay? Needs are what people believe are lacking from their lives. So I need a car. I need a car. Okay? I have money, but I don't feel it's safe to keep it at home. I need a reliable bank. I don't have a, a place to live. I need an apartment or I need a house. I need. Okay? Wants are what they perceive can satisfy those needs. And I need a car to be able to uh, transport myself from one place to another. So I want to buy a car. Okay? Need should be not is, and they will want keep his and I have in Okay? Exactly. How I can satisfy this need. For example, you need somewhere to keep your money safe. This is the need. And so you want a personal bank account. Banks know this and try to get you to open an account at that particular bank. You notice this, right? You notice on the billboards at Tarshin Internet. All the advertisements are almost the same, especially for banks. Get this much money and return every month, right? The profit and the interest rate on the mortgage, the, the loans we take for the houses. Basically, all the banks are the same. They have the same rules and regulations, everyone, every one of them. But it depends on how they bring this message across to attract your attention, right? And you know, you have probably have noticed all the important things that we really need to know are written in very tiny letters at the end of the advertisement where we don't see, right? Okay, this is very important. These couple of slides are important. Personal banking, and when I'm writing an advertisement for regular people, Language for communicating with retail customers, special sentence patterns. نمط الجمل يعني كيف بيكون كيف بدي ركب الجملة إذا أنا عم بكتب دعاية for regular people. Okay? The style of the language is direct through a variety of special sentence patterns as follows. And it is all also very personal. Okay? Imperatives. Most of the times I have a sentence that starts with the verb. An imperative sentence that asks you to do something, like close the door, open the window, right? These are imperative sentences. The type of statement is used to tell you what benefit you receive or you, what you must do to get it. Can. Most of the sentences, now when you leave the classroom today, when you are watching the billboard as you go home, you will notice the patterns from here. A lot of sentences have the verb can in them to show you into the health product or the health service, into the health service, into the health service, what you can do. Benefit verbs, they will show you all the ways you can benefit from this product, right? The new when the 3G uh, technology was available, right? They, it's fast, it's reliable, right? These are all adjectives to make us, how, how are we going to benefit <coughs> from this product, okay? Noun groups, usually the, these are collection of words, but they are only nouns, okay? For example, three registration with every car, right? There is no verb in this sentence, and they're not telling you when you buy a car, we will give you the registration to G for free. It's a noun group. It's faster to read. That's why they use it. Offers, we know this, every piece of product that someone is trying to sell is offering you something. Like this washing machine will save you energy, will make your uh, clothes cleaner, and so on. Promises, every product or service promises to do something, right? It will make your life easier, for example. This is a promise. And usually, towards the end of the advertisement, whether it's in the newspaper or in the billboard, and after she back on billboard, we see them all the time. Wherever we're coming and going, there are billboards all around us. Usually, towards the end of the billboard, you will notice that the longer sentences, the complex sentences, are only towards the end. 
Why? Because they assume that you have about five to ten seconds to read a billboard. أنا عم بقطع السيارة أو عم بقطع ماشي ما عندي أنا مش مش مجلة تقعد أتعمق بالدعاية رايت right? عالسريع so smaller sentences at the beginning or fragments noun groups to grab your attention as fast as possible and if you have enough time left you can read the last sentence okay so at the, towards the end a word group or a clause introducing any of the above to whatever if you want من من لقي الجمل الطويلة مثلاً if you buy our product we will guarantee that you will have this or that هاي جملة كلمة كي جملة عن فوق من لقي أو جملة طويلة يعني زي ما تقول جملة عن at the beginning we will find shorter sentences okay like we will see in this example in the book please open your books to just let me tell you which page this exercise is from First of all, open page 108 in your book, activity 5.5, okay? Page 108, activity 5.5. What they have done here is they have given us some sentence patterns. What we need to do is basically identify an ayanwa here. And I'm going to go back one slide to keep this here. So you can identify. مثلاً أول جملة بتقلنا the monthly mortgage repayment calculator will help you work up your repayments. أي نوع جملة is it? Leave this one if you find it. If you find it difficult. The second one. Exactly, will help you. It's a benefit verb, right? So it's benefit verbs. Now the second one. With our, you can get a great package of benefits. Uh, can. Can. The bank's card offers you a fantastic rate of interest. Office. Offers. We'll send you a monthly statement. Promise. Promise. No repayments for three months. No. Noun group, mafia fad, right? Hey, you will see it a lot on the billboards. Uh, get 5.5% with our instant access savings account. Imperative. Imperative, it starts with the verb. And the last one, whether you renew to investments or an existing customer, you will find. It's, this was the complex sentence, right? It, start, it starts with whether. It introduces a subordinate clause, right? It's the, the last one, a clause, subordinate clause. Yeah, it starts with if, whether, and so on. Very easy. You will, you will see now that as you uh, leave the classroom and actually see billboards as on your way home, for example, or on your way to work, you will start noticing these patterns. And it will become easy for you to understand why these advertisements are written in this way. Okay, so these are the answers to the exercise we just did together. All right? So, more explanation about the language style. Our she shift na the language patterns. Yeah, sentences that are imperative, sentences that have the verb can in them, sentences that show offers, that uh, show benefit, noun groups, promises, but also, you, you know this from your own experience. Advertisements have a lot of adjectives in them because they want to show you the qualities of the product that they are saying. It's safe, it's fast, it's beautiful, it's healthy, it's clean. These are all adjectives or adverbs. Adverbs are very clean. Right? Language for communicating with retail customers, evaluation language. An important feature of promotional marketing text is very positive evaluation language. Akid. This kind of evaluation is one of the major differences between promotional and academic texts. In marketing text, evaluation tends to reinforce one viewpoint, how unique and special the company or the product is. Right? How do I do this? By using positive vocabulary. Positive verbs and positive adjectives and adverbs. Positive verbs like verbs describing benefits, 
this will help you, this will allow you, this will give you. Adjectives and adverbs, special adjectives and adverbs describing sorry, how special something is, how fast, the speed, the simplicity, the security, whatever the product is. Other words and other word groups. Okay? For example, um, let us look at an advertisement written for the bank. Okay? Before we do that, there is one exercise we skip. We open, we open your resource book to page 64 our sheet. We're going to do page 64 and 65 in the resource book. These are very interesting. I find this to be a very interesting chapter because we see these things in our uh, everyday life, right? Uh, look at the advertisement for hotels, uh, um, not hotels, um, um, travel agency, where you book flights, uh, resort, where you, to travel places, okay? So look at the advertisements and try to see whether you can find any patterns of sentences we have seen. But then look at, you see these four pictures in the middle, look at the titles of these four pictures. How do they all start? Save 50, save 50 pounds plus. Save up to 100 pounds. Cruise the Caribbean. They all start with the verb imperatives, right? Now look at the bullet points on the in the first column under holiday savings all year round. The bullet points. 10% discount. Exactly. 10% discount on any Thomas Cook, G, JMC, and Sunset holidays until 31st October 2007. This is a noun group, mafia right? 6% discount on holidays with more than 100 tour operators. Again, noun group. Uh, specially negotiated fares with more than 50 top airlines. Uh, again, discounted hotel notes, no credit card fees, kill on noun groups, okay? If you go all the way to the very last sentence in this column, I think it's a brochure, for example, right? Another, another, another sentence. Before the telephone numbers. Another sentence. It says, so whether you're looking for a last-minute bargain, planning your winter getaway, or getting prepared for summer 2008, get booking now and save yourself even more with the NatWest Travel Service. It's a complex sentence here. We have a subordinate clause, whether you're looking at. If you're looking, do this and this and that. It's the last one, last pattern, a clause, a subordinate clause, right? So you can find different examples of the sentence patterns. Now, let's look at the advertisement written for the bank, telephone banking. What we're going to do is that we're going to read this advertisement and try to find Verbs that show how we will benefit from this product, adjectives that describe this product, or any adverbs and adjectives that describe this product. Okay? Miss, can you start reading using a telephone? Or start from the text. No access, no access to the internet. Yeah. No access to the internet or no time to visit a branch. And maybe picking up the phone comes more naturally when you're trying to get things done. Then you need to know about Bart Clay's telephone banking. It's quick, it's easy, and it's available 24 hours a day, 365 days a day. Okay, before you continue, what adjectives have we come across so far? It's quick, it's easy, and it's available. These adjectives are describing the product, the service, for example. Now the bank is selling the service of um, telephone banking. Okay, so positive vocabulary. Go on. Of shopping, why not call and find out your balance so you know what you can afford to spend? Just remember you haven't paid your credit card. Do it now while it's still fresh in your mind. It really is that simple what work plays telephone banking. With a push button phone, your account and all of your other services are literally at your fingertips any time of day. And if you need more than a fast automated service, that's okay too, because our advisors are available from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days a week. Okay, 
Any adverbs and adjectives that you can uh, identify? Look at the adverbs fast automated services. Exactly, fast automated service, meaning that uh, not an actual individual answers, right? It's an automated service. And you press one, press two, press three. The, the third sentence, it says, it really is that simple. Really is an adject, adverb, right? It emphasizes simple. Simple is an adjective, so it's really simple. Right? And also, you have noticed that we found the verb of Sanan, what you can afford. You need. verb to need. Yeah, sometimes the advertisements make you feel you need something even if you don't need it, right? And yeah, they, they make they put it in such a way to create a sense that we cannot live without this uh, product, right? This is their job, and they do this by repeating these verbs and putting all these adjectives to a certain product, okay? So these are the uh, examples that we have just covered. So, organizing messages into a text. The overall purpose of a marketing text is to predict the customer's needs and wants. We've come back to the two important words we said are important in marketing, wants and needs. And persuade the customer that the product will satisfy them. The text does this through dialogue with the customers. Right? Even the impersonal and objective language of an academic essay is designed for dialogue with a, an audience. In order to create a one-to-one -one dialogue, the voice of the marketing text is quite often here, um, the word is missing, personal. It has to be personal. Because someone is talking to you, shakhsiya. Right? On the last word, it's not on the slide. It has to be personal. Okay? So let's say you would ask the question, what is the language of marketing texts? What do I need to say? I'll go back to the first slide that I need. First, I need this slide to talk about the type of sentences, right? The style of language is direct, which is created do, through these types of sentences. Then the language is uh, uses positive vocabulary. And then the marketing text written for individuals creates a dialogue with the Customers, all right. So this much for ah, this much for advertisements written for personal advertisers. Yeah, personal, regular people. Okay. And the next step, how do I go? Then I'll give an example. The banks, but it's not necessary to be banks. Anything. It's not necessary to be services. It's to be products. Right. So that was. The, 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 what we just reviewed quickly now, how to write marketing texts for personal retail customers. The second part, which is much shorter, how to write marketing texts for corporate businesses. And in businesses in the Kbar, when you can mother and back him out, shock us, what I'm back, I'm back him out, right? Automatically, it will take more to impress a big company than to impress. One person. Automatically, I will have to speak more with these big companies than what I have to do with one person. Automatically, yeah, I need to talk more. I need to put more information. Okay? Let me just check if that website opened. Okay, for, uh, we we're still with the HSBC bank, right? So if you go to corporate banking, you notice, right? If you remember what we saw uh, just a bit before, uh, how short the sentences were for personal banking. Right? Look at, there's almost a text here for the corporate banking. And there's a quotation mark, right? It's a professional person in the field who is giving information about the service specifically to corporate organizations, right? So 
so basically, the, the main thing you need to be aware of is that the sentence is written for corporate advertisements are longer sentences, they are more complex, there is less focus on the you because we're not talking about we're not talking to one person anymore, we're talking to a, a group of people. We need to be more professional because we're trying to impress uh, people who are in high positions, right, in this company, who are the decision makers. So automatically we use more uh, technical words, more complex sentences, and we less focus, we focus less on the personal pronoun you. And this is what it says on this slide. Corporate banking. Corporate banking is banking for a different market. It is for very large businesses. Those with turnovers in excess of at least 1 billion pounds. Or it depends on the country that defines these amounts of money. It should not be confused with business banking. Business banking by the most and personal business by the corporate. Corporate yield of worship. The banks are looking to increase their earnings by capturing more specialist business from corporate customers. This means that the nature of the approach to a corporate customer differs from the approach to a personal customer. Right? So, the language for communicating with corporate customers. The it, it, yani the language. It is usually more formal than that used to address personal customers. This formality is shown by the use of more complex word groups and more complex vocabulary in general. Less use of direct you focused statements. Longer sentences taking a more descriptive approach and containing more information. And automatically, if my sentences are longer, my paragraphs are longer. Right? نحن أجمعنا بالبيلبورد قليل ما نشوف advertisements for corporate, big corporations because they are usually done on a one-on-one -on -one basis usually the billboards that we see are for personal and all the advertisements are for personal uh, for regular people like us okay? Noun groups and products and services. If they're just more focused on what is the type of language that we use. The more formal style for addressing corporate customers requires more specific noun groups in order to talk about the specialized products and services. At the same time, these topics must be dealt with in a very positive manner. They are the bank's strength. As a result, the text contains a wide range of word groups combining nouns with positive adjectives. Okay? All right. So, this much for the marketing <coughs> texts. Okay? So, basically, for the marketing section of this chapter, we have looked at two distinct items or the descriptions, if you want. How to write marketing texts for regular individuals and how to write marketing texts for corporations. That's it. Okay? Alright? So, this much for marketing texts. Now we're going to go to the finance documents. Finance documents is much shorter, but there's an exercise that's a bit long, uh, and it's, it has been repeatedly asked on the final. Okay? So, I will focus on it, but to, uh, to make sure that you understand the information here, I want to go back to chapter 2 from uh, book 3. Okay, if you remember very quickly, if you remember chapter 2, the second part of chapter 2, we looked at the second part, let me see from where, yes, the part of chapter 2 that deals with visual representations. And the second part of chapter 2, we looked at, we said that the, the, one of the main differences between essays and reports is the fact that in essays, 
essays have to be continuous sentences. Whereas reports, I can interrupt my sentences to put a graph, a chart, a table, or any kind of information, visual information that I want. But essay, I am not allowed to, okay? I can put these in the reports. Now, when I put the graph in a report, or a table, or a chart, I cannot leave it like that. I need to immediately, right after the chart or table, I need to write a paragraph that tells the reader what pieces of information do I want to focus on from the table, chart, or graph. I cannot leave it up to the reader who is going to the graph. I need to help him understand what I want him to understand from the graph. Okay? So, the, the first thing I can do to tell the reader on I'm faster on the chart or table or graph is to start my sentence by saying, as can be seen from chart one, or whatever the name of that chart is, right? As can be seen from, according to, as shown in, it can be seen in. This draws the attention to the reader that they need to look at the chart in order to understand the information in the paragraph. And like any other paragraph, it needs a thesis, sorry, a topic sentence and a concluding sentence. In the middle, okay, all right, but maybe, uh, I'll come back to this. But in the middle, what can I include? Let's say I'm giving information about this table that has all these numbers in it, okay? I will write a paragraph below it that tells the reader what I want them to focus on here. هون مثلا في كثير ارقام اول شيء مش معقول احكي عن كل الارقام انا بدي مثلا شيء معين ركز عليه تقول للريدرز رايت من هالشارت سو فيرست اي ستارت وذ ذا توبك سنتنس ماي توبك سنتنس بيسكلي ويل سي وات ذس باراجراف از اباوت ويتش كان بي ذا تايتل اوف ذا شارت اوريدي مثلا ذس باراجراف ديلز وذ ذا كازاخستان ماركت سامري بيتوين ذا ييرز 1999 تو 2003 بيرفكت توبك سنتنس I need a concluding sentence like any other paragraph. In the middle, I can include a sentence that gives exact information from the chart, exact the information must have matter. The population in 1999 was 14.9 million. Exact information. Hello. 14.9 is almost what? 50. So I can also give approximate information. Yeah, the number, I round it up. I can say the population of Kazakhstan was almost 15 million in 1999. Okay? Or, Masalan Hon. I have 16.9 in 1999, the GDP. And then in 2003, it's 28. Now, 28 is not the exact double of 16.9, right? But to ease my. Uh, conversation, to, to ease the language that I'm using, I can say the GDP almost doubled from 1999 to 2003. Almost, when I say almost, half of, the half of, even half of, double that of, three quarters of, I'm not giving the exact numbers, but I'm giving an approximation. Okay, so, I have to the topic sentence, I can give exact information, I can give approximate information, I can give information that is not in the text to explain something about, uh, that is not in the table, to explain something about the table, right? And also, because I am the one who is reading this chart, I'm making sense out of it, I can give my own interpretation, my own point of view, my own analysis, which is always, usually, in, uh, uh, I use usually adjectives. I say it was an incredible growth. When I say incredible, I already have my my point of view. You can have it any. It's not. It's not incredible. But I find it incredible. For example, right? So, in a paragraph that comes below a visual representation, I need a topic sentence, a concluding sentence. In between. I can have a sentence that gives exact information, a sentence that gives approximate information, information that is not in the chart that I can give to explain more about the chart, and my own point of view. All right? 
Now I need you to fo I need you to remember this part when we go back to chapter six, okay? Because basically the only exercise that they have given us in chapter six is that they've given us a table that contains numbers like this, and they're asking us to write a paragraph below it to talk about these numbers. Now, for the past couple of semesters, what they have been doing in the final is that because in chapter six there's only one table with numbers in it, sometimes they're asking the question from chapter six that we will see and work on now, but they give you the table from chapter two. In chapter two, if you tell me that, and all the tables that I'm not even mentioning, clear that. You know, if you have table, but then if you apply chart, and then they do. And then in chapter six, there is one table that has numbers in it. So these are the three tables, charts, if you want, that you can be asked to work on. So please, when you are reviewing chapter six, at the same time, go back to chapter two, okay? And when they ask you to write a paragraph that talks about the information in the chart, other than what we just explained here, I can use expressions. مثل ما أنا مثلاً double that of, twice that of, half that of. In relation to 99-2001, for example, I can use noun groups, for example, uh, for example, I can say a minimal rise. From 1999 to 2000, there has been a minimal rise, a short rise, right? A marked increase, a marked increase, a big increase. Dramatic decline. Down. Dramatic means it's very obvious, here in Bible. A steep fluctuation. Steep fluctuation is when something is going up and down, up and down. This is a steep fluctuation, right? So you can use all these adjectives that they have given us in chapter two to use them to talk about the table in chapter six as well, okay? Uh, so let me go back to chapter six. Chapter six, the second part, finance documents, describing financial data. Okay? Why figures? And why do we need numbers in businesses? Businesses are required to account for what they do. They're not free. There are rules and regulations that they need to abide by. So there are ways that they need to do their business. The accountants for small companies have to produce annual accounts for the owner, while larger businesses have to, cre to create annual reports. The information is used in a range of activities. Yeah, now why do we need these financial documents? The, we need them including the definition of how much the tax the organization must pay. Depending on their profit, they will need to pay a related amount of tax. Showing investors how the company is doing. Right? And allowing the organization to control its spending, to see where it's, is it spending money that it doesn't need to, to, cut, uh, to cut back. To measure its progress and to plan for the future. So consequently, all businesses produce figures. Now, the second important question that comes to our minds is that why do we need to write about numbers? Are numbers clear enough by themselves? Okay. Now, basically, sometimes when it's one or two numbers, they speak for themselves, clear. But when I want to include a table in a financial document, it's very dangerous if I leave it unexplained. Because if I leave it unexplained, then I leave it up to the reader to understand the information the way he sees it. But let's say, let's say I have a company that has undergone some losses, but it also has some profits. I have it, I have all this information in a table, and I want to put it in my financial document. What I can do with the power of words is I can influence the reader to see the table in a different light than they would have had they been by themselves. What I can do is that I can immediately, at the beginning of the paragraph, highlight the profits, talk about the profits, describe the profits, and then, passingly, 
عليه في جملة صغيرة احكي عن ال losses for example right so I the way I talk about numbers influences the reader about these numbers okay so occasionally the figures speak for themselves and can be read simply by putting them in a table or in a diagram of some sort so writing is not always necessary writing about figures becomes necessary because Writing text about figures can help the process of reading and understanding the significance of figures. Text can quickly review the figures, presenting the relevant items to the reader in a slower and more readable way. This kind of writing influences how the reader understands the figures. Why do we write about figures? To influence the reader. Words can influence the reader in any direction you want, more than numbers. Numbers speak for themselves then. Okay? So, writing basic sentences about, say, numbers. Okay? Here, I'm going to go directly to the exercise, so whatever we do makes sense. We have this table. On the slides, the table is missing its title. So, when we look at it, we're not sure what is it that we are looking at. So if we go to the book, page 121, page 121, all right, we can see they give us the title of this table. It says, Nokia mobile device volume by geographic area. And the number of Nokia mobile devices that have been sold in these different geographical places, right? And if um, there's more explanation on top, it says, look at table 5.1, which shows Nokia sales of mobile devices. Mobile devices include mobile phones, but also other mobile technologies such as handheld computers. And anything that Nokia has produced, if you want, okay? Now, the numbers here are in million units. Units, يعني, uh, أطع, right? أطع, أطع, million units. So, what information do I have here? I have information pertaining to quarter one, 2006. Quarter one, and And the businesses, Ijmela, ما بينطروا لآخر السنة تيعملوا study. كل ثلاثة شهور, they call it quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Okay? Quarter one, 2005. Quarter, yeah, you right, actually, quarter. That's a trimester, three months. Okay, quarter, the first four months. So, um, quarter one, 2006, quarter one, 2005. Here, the, this is year on year change. Yeah, when 2005 to 2006, a this of Comparison between the two years. Then we have quarter four, 2005. And quarter on quarter change, okay, between the years uh, 2005 and 2000, the quarter one 2005 and quarter four 2005. So anyway, for the purposes of this exercise, we will be dealing with information up until the year on year change, up until here, okay. Right. So we will be dealing with quarter one 2006. Quarter 1, 2005, year on year change that is given, they've already calculated it for us. It's given in percentages. We have these ge geographical areas, Europe, Middle East and Africa, China, Asia Pacific, North America, Latin America, and the total. All right? Now, so let me draw your attention. So this exercise, how was it given? It's the same way it's given in the book, actually. In the final, they give you this table, or the table about Kazakhstan, any table, and they ask you to you produce a paragraph talking about the information in this table. Now, already, if you are very good at English, you can, without any trouble, talk about the numbers in the table. But usually, there are some rules and regulations to the structure of the sentence, OK? So you can benefit from that. So we're going to merge the two exercises, uh, the two chapters, the second part of chapter two 
with the second part of chapter 6 to come up with a very good paragraph that describes the information here. مثلا, قبل ما نبلش بالsentence patterns, إذا طالبين مني أكتب paragraph, بدي بلش بالtopic sentence, شو بدي أقول بالtopic sentence? Yeah. So, say it. This paragraph shows the Nokia mobile device volume by geographic area. Or, right, I can put the <coughs> verb here <coughs> because they, they, I don't have a verb here, right? So I can say that this paragraph will describe the sales of Nokia mobile devices in different geographic areas. <coughs> Usually, the topic sentence is very easy to come up with. The title of the paragraph, sorry, the title of the chart, the table, is your topic sentence. You don't need to. Uh, Think about it much. The conclusion, the concluding sentence, can be anything that you can conclude from this table. For example, if you look at these numbers, look at 2005 and then look at 2006. I keep 2005 is before 2006. Right? What do you see? Decrease and sales. Increase. Increase. Right? right? So all the numbers have increased, all of them. So the conclusion that I can come up with that which means that Nokia was doing very well between the years 2005 and 2006. So I can say Nokia shows uh, uh, great sales between the years 2000 and 2005-2006 as can be seen from the table where all the countries have increased their sales and some countries have even almost doubled. Like, for example, if you look at North America, it was 4.3, almost doubled, right? Now it's 8.4, which is even more than the double came in, right? So, now, for, for, for this exercise, please, to look at the sentence patterns, I will write some on the board, but please, I want you to, as you're studying this session, please uh, put the following page numbers to review at the same time, page 122 and 123. Okay? If they gave, they have given us more than one sentence pattern that we can use. How did they divide them? First, they have given us an example of how we can write about one number in a sentence. How we can talk about two numbers in a sentence in, on the same line, and how we can compare two numbers on the same line between two countries. Coming. Okay? So, look at the first example. On page 122, it says, it says, sales in Europe, we are aware of the sales in Europe, stood at stood at and wasslul hadid okay stood at 20.4 million units in quarter 1 2006 right i'm just talking about the first number 20.4 million hello i do, i'm not obliged to always use stood at they have given me other verbs that i can use i can say amount to reach reach stand stand in aslan total or verb to be, was. And I come in a fine word. Sales in Europe were 20.4 million units in quarter one 2006. Sales in Europe totaled to 20.4 million units in 2000, quarter one 2006. Right? And then, if you have the exercise, vary the verbs. Okay? And don't use the same verb in every sentence. It becomes tedious, it becomes repetitive and boring. Okay? مش ضروري كل وحدة بل يعني كل جملة أقول sales in Europe. I can say Nokia's European business, Nokia's Chinese business, Nokia's Middle Eastern business. It, and I can talk, I can say the subject in any way I want. Okay? So, the first example that they have given us, let me write the first one down. Here we have. Nokia sales, so sales in Europe. Stood at 
20.4 million units in quarter one 2006. Okay? I can also say, like in step two, Nokia's European business recorded sales right? Of 20.4 million units in quarter one 2006. Now, what if I want to say, what if I want to compare the sales in 2005 with the sales in 2006? I can do it in two, in two ways. Either I can only give the percentage of rise, or I can give the percentage of increase with mentioning the number in 2005. Okay? So these are the examples in step three and step four. So Fini Anna, I can say the following. Sales in Europe stood at Sales in Europe stood at 20.4 million units in, two, uh, in quarter one 2006. Seventeen percent from quarter one, two thousand five. Right? And I repeated the same sentence, so that you are not confused. The same type of sentence. Sales in Europe stood at twenty point four million units in quarter one, two thousand six. Up, yeah. Up by 17% on quarter one, 2005. Then what if I want to know how much the sales were in 2005? Okay. Exactly. See, so they will from to, right? And I'm comparing, like you said. So then I can do step six. It says, sales in Europe rose by 17% from to, and yani from 17.4 million units in quarter one 2006 to 20.4 million units in quarter one 2006, right? So sorry, Jim. Sales in Europe rose by or increased by, here you will see any verb that shows an increase, rose by 17% from 17.4 million units in quarter one 2005 to 20.4 million units in quarter one, 2006, okay? What if I'm in a single one, but I'm in a single one, 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 I'm in a single from 7.1 million units in quarter one 2005 to 10.9 million units in quarter one 2006. Yeah, as I the country, it becomes very boring, right? I need to vary, and first and foremost, I need to pick the information I want to discuss, not every number. Okay. But what if I want to, in the same sentence, compare two uh, geographical areas? Very simple. Why? Why, Zir? Excellent. Yeah, no, but look at Jimmy with the Why? Why means at the same time, right? Okay. How do I come in, Jimmy? For example, how do I end in Latin America? Why Latin America? Why sales in Latin America? For example, Latin America. It rises uh, by um, sixty-one. Ah, uh, by sixty-one percent from. 7.1 million. No, our chief, the old man, Alfred, 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 Alfred,
million uh, units in quarter one uh, uh, 2005 to 7.1 million units in quarter one 2016. That's it. Okay. So basically, from these two pages, I want you to try to remember these three sentence patterns. How to talk about one number, how to talk about two numbers, okay, how to talk about three numbers, and how to compare two geographical places. Very, very simple. Hala, henna atin kon other examples. Look at them. But at least know these, okay? That's the question that I'm asking. It's up to you. Hala, of course, you're going to talk about the numbers, right? Here, look at quarter one 2006, quarter one 2005. Hey, the year on year change already in the Athena listed the sales from 2005 to 2006. Hey, I'm in the list. So, but the but the interview is showing that the month 2005 to Athena is after 2006. But chronologically. بدي أحكي عن ألفين إذا عم بعمل comparison بين ألفين وخمسة وألفين وستة بدي أحكي عن ألفين وخمسة قبل ما أحكي عن ألفين وستة يعني بس أقول بهالجملة مثلاً هون sales in Europe rose by 17 percent right الارتفاع يعني من ألفين وخمسة لألفين وستة سبعة عشر بالمية from 17.4 right to 20.4 the second part we're not dealing with in the question, it's not dealt with because, at, yeah, in, in one exit, in one paragraph, I cannot talk about all these numbers. To talk about all these numbers, I will need an entire paper. So, for the purposes of the exercise, they have cut it short. But you can. The same type of sentences apply them to any number that you have. Honey, can we say a quarter on quarter change, not year on year change? And honey, quarter four two thousand five. Yeah, the rabbi fasl. You want to compare it with quarter one 2005. Okay. 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 Um, so, let's say you are asked to write a paragraph about this. You're not obliged to write only these sentences. As can be seen from the table, right? You can give approximate information, come in. So, how the exact information? Fin an article, approximate information. And fin ur masalan, 11.9, it's almost 12 million. By the fact I say almost double that of about the approximate information. You can incorporate between the sentences your own interpretation. What you interpreted, for example, is the fact that all the countries have seen an increase in sales. Right? You can insert this piece of information. It's your own analysis. If you know anything about Nokia, if you have any information about Nokia that is not in this chart, you can include it as well. To conclude. If you want to. Hey, in the conclusion, you can conclude something. But I mean any piece of information that you have. Okay? You, in the conclusion, for example, you can say, unfortunately, Masala, we all know that the sales of Nokia mobile devices have decreased once the uh, Androids, right? Smartphones have surfaced. Until Nokia was able to catch up, the Samsung and iPhone had already swept the market. So you can give this conclusion as well, right? So, but but when I'm writing this paragraph, it's very important that I'm not redundant. I don't need to talk about all the all the geographical areas. Right? I'm in variety. Give my own interpretation. Give approximate information. Alright, to come up with a good paragraph. Now, as far as I remember, last, last semester we didn't have this exercise on the final. But in the previous two finals, we had this exercise. Chart from table two, uh, chapter two, Kazakhstan. Either this or this. There are two tables in the entire book already that you need to focus on. Okay? Is it? It's simple. 
It's not complicated as long as I know what I'm doing. If I look at the table uh, carefully, I can see the numbers. All I need to do is write about them. Okay? This is it. This much for chapter 5. I'm going to stop here now. Next week we will continue chapter 6 and go over all of book 3. Review all of book 3 together. Okay?